Hey, Josh. Populating the agenda things. Do you have anything? Hey. Hey, hi. those work. These work much better when I turn them on. Oh, okay. I was like, hi. I was like, okay, no, hi. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, you injured your voice. Yeah, I said, no, um, it, it really hurts to talk. Wow, wow. Yeah. I'm not going to ask what happened. I mean, you, you're going to tell us next week when you're fine again. Yeah, or tell us in chat. Or chat, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I may need to see a doctor. It, it's, I don't know what it says. Oh, I hope, hopefully it goes away. Just sometimes there are like weird things that happen. I I'd like that. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, we all worry about other things, but stuff like, you know, the various throat infections are still a thing. I don't, I don't think it's, I think it's um, my, my vocal cords, like the muscles. Um, yeah, I, it's, I don't think it's a upper respiratory infection or anything. Not that I go anywhere, it doesn't yeah. matter. I never leave the house. Yeah, I think we're all in the same boat. It's like day in, day out, home sweet home, right? Yeah, I don't know. I somehow did manage to get a cold within the last three months. So oh, really? how, I'm not, how I'm not exactly sure, you know? <laughs> the... Um, so, uh, oh wow, oh that must have been fun. It was really bad. The um, oh wow, and the worst part about it is they expect you to do something about it, <laughs> right? It's like monkey, fix this, make it go away. It's like <laughs> our cat all the time expects us to fix the weather for him. Yeah, it's just right. Hard. Like I'll, I'll open up the back door and he'll look at it raining and he'll yell at me. Mm -hmm. Fix this. <laughs> really? That's funny. <laughs> My yeah. yells all the time. <laughs> yeah. The, um, so it's our fault. We talk to him all the time. So he tries to talk back. Did we want to walk through the framework? Sure. Um, yeah. I wasn't quite sure what people wanted to work on. Honestly, I'm not working on much because I'm a little overwhelmed yeah. at work. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing that story in general, in, including me. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I did put a... Um, pull request because there were like some links missing and some spacing and then there was like a sentence that shouldn't have made it in that was like the copy and paste kind of stuff that not only that one that we fixed but another one that was not so um so that's still in right now do you want me to, to share screen or like if you or just what did you mean with going through it um i wasn't sure if i just looked at the future agenda yeah, so my question is, uh, for instance, there are like 
sections where I would love to have more input. Uh, for instance, um, in the tools that help minimize, uh, you know, PR submission process, like that streamline the process. Carlicia mentioned something about tilt. And I put something in there, but it's like it needs a proper description because it's like sometimes I, because I'm not that technical, like if I look at the website, it doesn't really tell me what the value is in here. And I'm sure there are like maybe some other things and they're like um, that could go in here. So there are parts where I would love someone to, you know, have a look and see specifically with the technical parts, to be honest, it was in the PR process. It was really like, okay, I'm just typing what people are telling me because I don't really understand the process, which is like for me. But I think like um, Scott looked over it. So I think that's probably fine. But with the tools, maybe there is like something that we want to add here. It's like, I don't know. So when I read the tool section, um, it, it's intended to be examples of how you can help people with tools, not recommendations for tools, I would say, or a, a yeah, thorough so explanation of the it. value prop. So I think what you had was fine. I'll definitely recheck it though. Um, I think only one of them I commented on because it was a little confusing Docker. Yeah, I mean, but I wouldn't worry about trying to capture like selling tilt or why, like it only makes sense if it makes sense for your project. And yeah. they're just examples of like, here are things we can do in our projects to help people beyond just a build script, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much because like, the point of the framework, right? It's not to technically tell anyone how to do things. It's about the yeah, people. Yeah, high level and these are kind of the tools. Uh, yeah, and it's as example of tools, right? But then there is like this, what is uh, IDE, an ID that they are comfortable with? I don't know what that was. I don't know where it came from. Integrated Development oh. Editor. Um, it's just like VS Code or IntelliJ or PyCharm. Okay, so that doesn't really need uh, what it, well, like maybe like what it. I mean, we could replace the word with editor, to be honest, and it would work just fine if we want to remove the acronym. We're just saying wherever you type your code in, if it understands your programming language, it's easier. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, that was like mostly the thing. And it's like, if, if, if you feel, look, I mean, it's not, yes, as you said, it's nothing like super prescriptive. It's like very high level. So um, I, I, I don't know if anything is missing or, and the other one, the, so uh, the next section is actually should be, um, become a PR very soon, hopefully tomorrow. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm behind on the PRs. Um, hmm? I'm looking over the updates to the framework right now and I should be able to merge it um, as soon as I'm not talking to people. <laughs> I don't like talking and merging, I always miss something. Um, well, it's difficult to be in a meeting and not talk. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I prefer to do all my merges at 1.30 a.m. <laughs> I like sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I merge at like the post-lunch slump when I don't want to do anything. That, that's when I read reviews and do stuff. Oh, the problem, no, the problem is actually I don't, I don't do that because I always find, I always find something I want to tweak <laughs> mm. and then it stops being the slump, right? <laughs> Suddenly you're working. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm behind on a bunch of things for governance, so I can't promise to be able to put in review and, and input on this. Yeah, well, there are a lot of things. So, why well, don't know? Like we like we have uh, the problem is it is kind of a beast, right? So there are like five. Yeah. Well, this is the biggest section, and it it becomes smaller <laughs> each one. Yeah. Probably as well because it was the interviews and people were getting tired. Uh -huh. <laughs> word. Um, but also like these are kind of the main sections too. Um, so I don't know if, yeah, if, 
So I don't know what what we're gonna do with this anyways. Like one, like once it is all there and we got feedback or didn't get feedback, it's now in the draft folder. What what are like what are I mean, of course, at some point we want it to be on a website where everyone can access it, but like the website isn't live yet, right? So that's also like a long process. And I don't know why it looks so nice. <laughs> um, I don't know either. And wait, so who needs who needs to approve what for the website? Eeyore. Oh, oh well, that has more to do with Ehor being overcommitted. But I know, no, it's nothing personal. But you know, yeah, that's no, that's it's all just... it's we're waiting for for the website is okay. that, and then, um, you know, we can flip the domain when we're ready. But we could at least okay. have a a resolvable, displayable website. Yeah. Well, my suggestion is to ping him via you know, Slack DM first oh, thing okay. in the morning. Sure. That's, that's been my, my way to get the Europe. fastest. Yeah, he's in Europe, but he stays up late. So, um, and that's, that's how I've gotten the fastest turnaround from him on things okay. is by DMing him at like 8.30 a.m. my time. I can do that. I was pinging him on GitHub, but that's probably not helping. <laughs> no, I don't, th I don't think he even reads his GitHub notifications. Okay. Well, I'll leave a tab open and then I'll remember tomorrow. Okay. So. so yeah, with, with the content, um, to move something out of draft and into a regular proposal, don't we need the, our TOC liaison to approve it? Or is that only for governance related things? Um. We need to have a review of anything that might be providing specific guidance to projects, but a lot of our things have already been reviewed. Yeah. Like um, specifically, would this framework need to be reviewed before? Yeah, we'd want um, SAD or we have a new we have a new second liaison. I need to look at who it is. Um, I mean, one of the things I actually wanted to talk about was actually having a meeting with Saad and the um, Oh, right, Elena volunteered. So okay. we need to bug Elena and maybe have a meeting with her and Saad. And maybe we should add a tag to things that specifically are waiting on just their approval. Do we have anything right now that's waiting on their approval? The, what, uh, no, we right don't, now? but we will in the okay. future, right? Like right. when we're ready for the contributor framework, then that, that'll be in that situation. Um, okay. And that would make it easier for them, right? If they know that they just look at the liaison approval label. Yeah, sounds good. Um, and okay. should we, um, just because it has several, um, sections um should we kind of do them one by one like this one like i just want to have those questions um like um still answered right but like once we feel this is like ready for that should we just put the sections i'm just thinking about user friendliness because <laughs> it's like if it's like five at once it may be um, overwhelming or do we want to have it like ready and then put it all in there i'm kind of show it to them until Basically, we're ready to put it on the site, okay. I think. Because um, otherwise, you're going to re edit it after they've looked at it. And, you know. Okay. I mean, correct me if people have different opinions on that, but a mad net label for liaison review, <laughs> talk review. making it red, fire engine red.
done already we're very productive <laughs> When is the letter getting into approval process? I've been hearing about it since I joined. That should be, it looks pretty complete. Is that also ready soon? The and letter. I've been working with it, so I've been using this. I feel awful about the letter. I haven't. I yeah, I haven't, I haven't done anything in the time I need to it. Yeah, I haven't done anything on it the last week, but I know that Karen's put in a bunch of work on it. Yeah. But what's missing? Um, I'm on the call with <laughs> um, oh. I so I split it. Um, Josh and I talked about splitting it. So kind of like the main version is like the most generic version, I guess you can say. And then um, I think what we talked about, like kind of can't remember because we've been going back and forth about it was kind of having like a um well I've now named it the expansion pack <laughs> but, um it's like an expansion of the maintainer section because um based on some of the bigger projects um there are more categories under maintainer um so hold on let me drop the link uh, I know <laughs> just not careless comment um, so I haven't deleted, so basically I made a duplicate version of the original one that we had, um, and I need to clean up the maintainer expansion pack, but essentially that would be like a, sorry, my cuckoo clock is off and, <laughs> um, but basically we were going to have this expansion pack be more, more specific to like the different maintainer roles, um, that we had talked about. So um, I think as of right now, what would fall under that would be like the community maintainer, um, project manager, um, which Steven and Gus has gave us, um, I think I, I have it saved, um, uh, just like a PR that Lori Apple wrote. Wait, is there any Lori Apple? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think that's project and program manager, I think will probably be the same. And then like release manager, docs manager, and then like sub project lead. Um, just so we don't like overwhelm a reader with everything that would be more than necessary for their project. Um, so I think that was kind of the last update we had, but Carolyn, you weren't here. So if you have any thoughts there. I had a question. Um, so I'm yeah. looking at the expansion pack and it still seems to have stuff about community participant. Oh yeah, I just, I haven't cleaned it up. It was basically oh, a okay. duplicate of the light version. Gotcha. Um, okay, let me clean it up real quick. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just, I, mean, really, I, I just was making sure I understood the two yeah. documents. Okay. Um, so I think we said who would take Hey Josh, does sub project lead go under maintainer? Yeah, that would be a type of maintainer. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I like, I really like the suggestion to split it. I think it makes it a lot easier to think about. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, ignore the like table of contents at the beginning, but. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so project lead, like, should we do a project lead section or would it just, because that also kind of comes down to governance, right? I feel like that's more governance. Yeah, I mean, the difference between project lead and maintainer is governance. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, whether or not we want to, I mean, the case for adding that to the template Thing is, we already have a governance template for maintainer-led organizations. Right. So I kind of feel like we should just direct people to that rather than supplying an alternative. I realize 
some projects do have combined governance and contributor ladder documents, but there's a limit to the permutations we can represent. I really like just linking to it and being like, hey, beware of this. It's a governing yeah, mm, so governance yeah. issue. Go read here. Yeah. Yeah. The um because I mean like the maintainer. Um, well, once we have this, I'm gonna make some changes to the maintain to the um, maintainer council governance template um, to take some things out and simply direct people to the contributor ladder template. So the um, because better than having sort of duplicate stuff. For one thing, I'm already dealing with some projects that have two different definitions of a maintainer in two different documents. <laughs> it doesn't help anybody. So then for maintainer, under responsibilities include, some of it is uh, Governance. Handling CNCF relations, speaking on behalf of the project. Mm -hmm. right? Those would those would probably go away, right? Because those are more project lead. Um so like given maintainers like the umbrella category, um, for all the breakdowns of the other categories, like what are yeah, what are like more general responsibilities? You mean general just for if you're a maintainer? Yeah, because like we originally wrote this, right? Like as like kind of like, um, yeah. yeah, with like the project lead position in mind. And I, I guess it's like now how do we just make this like as generic as possible for the maintainer category? Wait, so we have the maintainer category in the basic file. Yeah. And then we have sort of subtypes of maintainer. Yeah. Um, which include all of these. Um, so. I mean, like if I was going to put it in any other project lead, I would say the difference between a maintainer and a project lead is usually governance responsibilities. So see the maintainer council governance template here. Um, the, so then should I create a section that's just project lead as well and then like point it elsewhere? Well, I would put that in the in the separate types of maintainers file. Yeah. Okay. So Yeah. Oh, I remember what I did there. Actually. Do you mind, Karen, if I just make little edits as I'm sitting? Oh, go for it. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Just so we can want. throw it and see like places we could expand a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah, because we pulled it off from GitHub and now we're back on the HackMD, so go for it. Yeah. Also, um, I, I don't know if we should call it the maintainer expansion pack. <laughs> what's the oh, I like that. I like maintainer expansion track, but we should probably name the file something else. Yeah. <laughs> Does do, do people get a, a one of a kind unique card in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's holographic. The um I mean, honestly, I think for our target audience, calling it the maintainer expansion pack would actually be a lot of fun. I, I think the TOC would find it frivolous, unfortunately. <laughs> Not like extended um, ladder, the contributor ladder, because it's an extension, yeah. right? Like once you grow, you extend it. Mm -hmm. What was it extended? 
flat or yeah I think like the one would be like the basic, right? Like that's what you need, the core, any project needs those. And then yeah. the extended leather is like once you grow, you start needing, uh, you start to need additional rolls, not necessarily all at once, but. Yeah, I mean, some of it has to often do with project structure, right? Cause like we have a brand new project that we're launching and it already has sub project leads because of how the project is organized, right? Because the, the project is actually kind of a collection of drivers. And so each driver has an individual lead. Um, the, um, but um, um, for others like community manager, or release manager and stuff, those often only show up once you have like production adoption. And I have a question regarding the community manager, because we were kind of brainstorming about creating that role as well for Linkerd, but not so much for the um, social media uh, part, but more like uh, helping like really foster an engaging community, being yeah. Slack, help answering questions. I feel like that really is part yeah. of it, right? Like someone who helping people identify people who have a story to tell and then encourage them to tell that story, right? Like, yeah, the, these all need to be filled out so we could really use your help with that. Um, Cause if you look at the earlier roles in sort of the core set, like, like, you know, the basic maintainer role, for example, we have this criteria and responsibilities and privileges with each one. And we really need to have that with all of these roles. We just have not filled that out yet. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, there's a bunch more to a, um, a community manager, right? And you know, to say, hey, if we're gonna call this a maintainer role, there has to be a, how do I qualify for this maintainer role? Yeah. Wait, so um, kind of going back to what we were saying with the like umbrella category being maintainer then, um, <laughs> do we, so right now under maintainer, there is the criteria responsibilities and additional pri privileges sections. Mm -hmm. So we want to just take it out under the, uh, like under the maintainer section and then create, you know, a set for each subset <laughs> or, uh, or do we want one that um, is like a general maintainer list that would apply to the community manager, the project manager release manager and like so on and so on. Yeah, well this, I feel like we need some other things, right? Because for example, for some of these roles, particularly the ones that are not traditional code review roles, yeah, we need to add some stuff about the kinds of contributions that qualify you for that because we'll say, okay, mm, so sure. community manager is a maintainer role and therefore this person has to have had experience with authoring and reviewing and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but they're gonna be authoring and reviewing different stuff than a release manager would. So, so it's not necessarily how much we need to put in there, but what kind, if you follow me? Yeah, wait, so then, um, so should we leave the current criteria, responsibilities and privileges as is under maintainer and then everything under, um, you know, subcategory like community manager would just be like additional responsibilities? Yeah, or, or clarifications, right? Okay. Like, for example, we already have this, right? Is that yeah. general maintainer needs experience as a contributor and reviewer and approver. And the community manager needs specifically experience of reviewer and approver of the projects, media and contributor guides and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Is that they should have a track record of contributing to those things. Okay. Um, specifically, the docs manager should have a track record of contributing to the docs. Right. <laughs> um, I think there may be a little bit of a, not a problem, but um, I don't often see a community manager or some, some of these other managers always move up from contributor and approver. They, they may have been contributing, but um, in a different uh, way. Like for example, they may be showing up to meetings and helping to design and lay out like your plans for doing a whole bunch of things and being extremely engaged. They may have never actually worked on a PR with you though. I'd be concerned that the criteria would make people who are coming from a different 
method of engaging with the project yeah. um, feel like they can't be this unless they've been doing PRs. Because okay. a lot of these things don't happen in PRs. A lot of project management, release management, community management are happening in other channels. And I want, want to make sure that like we can somehow clearly say you don't have to be a pull request person to be yeah. so in one of these roles. Um, I, yeah, so I think that was kind of like what I'm getting at. We can either structure it where we put the initial set of criteria responsibilities and privileges um, at the beginning for all maintainers and just make it like really really generic and then like do like the you know additional points under each category of like the different kinds of maintainers or we scrape the generic criteria responsibility privileges and then just do each section with those points i think we can do generic but i think instead of thinking about specific activities yeah we're looking for um a general level of responsibility towards the project and people have demonstrated it already so they are coming to meetings they are engaging with new users and helping them they are aware of and helping to make decisions for the, mm -hmm. the project like I'm maybe not saying these great because I probably want to like think about it before I write them down, but um, it has nothing to do potentially with conference speaking obligations or pull requests or anything yeah. like that. It may just be someone's acting like a maintainer. <laughs> They're acting like someone who feels responsible for the project and mm -hmm. is invested and, um, you know, like those are the people I tap to become a maintainer. It's, it's yeah. not always number of PRs or so let's reset what's under criteria right yeah so for general yeah. criteria but like I think those like what we have right now is perfect for code maintainer right yeah and we can just start over and make just more general things like do they have the right attitude are they demonstrating that they will be a responsible maintainer already <laughs> you know yeah or not they're doing certain actions the actions are gonna be different for each one of these roles, but in general, there's a there's a different attitude of someone who's uh, trustworthy, I guess. You know that they'll be able to handle the responsibility of that role. Yeah. I know that sounds really qualitative, but that's okay. <laughs> the quantitative part comes in for each individual role. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good way of thinking of it. Um, you want to have the person with the right attitude and you know like the it, like you want them to be committed you want them to care about it that's like the broad overarching characteristics then it gets like if you go specific it has yeah. to, it's completely different because these are and that's why i think sometimes the word letter is a little misleading because it's not one it's like you have like these parallel tracks right if yeah. you're community manager I mean, yes, you need to understand the technology to help and so on, but it's like, it's, I mean, yeah, you don't have to have gone that path. You, you maybe you're super, you're, you enjoy helping people and, you know, engaging with the community and, you know, it's a different track with docs manager. I think it's even more clear because it can be a technical writer who has never submitted a PR. So it's like, you want someone who has like really good skills at writing and explaining technologies. Uh, that's their strongest you know characteristic not necessarily like triaging and things like that yeah so for example in porter um we have a docs manager and um she she didn't get the role by submitting a ton of prs to docs it was all through giving us advice on how to do our docs and then maybe she, she, she dropped all the meetings and then was able to give us feedback on like where we're missing how we should organize it all sorts of stuff that none of it gets captured in GitHub. <laughs> you know, even though the, the, the docs are in GitHub, a lot of that higher level planning and design and everything happens through other interactions. So I'm just agreeing with you and giving an example. That's all. <laughs> Um, one thing I think would be great to mention 
is we have sub project lead, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and I know we have like approvers too. Um, so a lot of times people don't become a maintainer for the whole project all at once. They usually end up being able to review in a certain area of the code or the like, your project, not project lead, but sub project lead, I guess, mm -hmm. um, or like the area where they've worked the most and they have the most um, domain expertise. Um, so it's, I, I guess like, that's just like a common thing I see. I know, you know, Kubernetes, like sometimes you'll just get approver access for like a subdirectory of code. <laughs> you so know? right now our approver is on the, um, the, the other one. Yeah, the other one. Cause like, I guess like regardless of how, or that seems like something that's more of a generic role than like, or that like, yeah, like most projects will have regardless. Um, so that one is sitting there. Do you think- Okay, like that's where I'll edit it then. I just want to maybe add a quick mention that someone can become an approver over just a sub area of the yeah. code. They don't have um, to become an approver for- Everything. The whole project. Yeah. Um, there was one section that I didn't, I'm not really familiar with that I think Josh had originally built out. But if you could take a look under organization member on like the main ladder as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess. Because do all projects have organization members or is that just? Um, not all projects do that, no. OK, OK. Um, the reason why some do is because of how GitHub works. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to be able to interact with a project, you have to be an organization member okay. or added to the repository, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, like there's a, in Porter, for example, people like to be able to assign issues to themselves and pick them up. And, you know, we have like a lot of stuff in the backlog and we don't want to be like, ask and maybe we'll let you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So as soon as someone's done their first PR, they become a an org member just so that they can assign an issue to themselves and claim it. Okay. So I think I'm going to drop, but I, I think I would like to uh, help with the community manager thing, just because I was like thinking it through. And if you need more, you know, areas, but you are working now. So this is, so it's not, you're, you're not working, this is not merged yet. So like, where is like the best way to kind of add ideas or should I just, you know, you can just add to this directly. I don't know if you have a HackMD account. Um, if you don't, you should still be able to. Like, oh, he, okay, right in here. Yeah, like um, there's a pencil at the top left, and if you click on it, you should be able to just edit it directly. Okay, yeah. okay, so cool. I'll I'll do that because again, like that's exactly something that we've been discussing now. So, and that's probably the only role where I have something more of a clear idea. Mm -hmm. um, so happy to help on that front. Yeah, um, just add as much as you want and then like, you know, whatever, yeah. like full trim if necessary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. Thanks. I will do that probably tomorrow or so or by the end of the week for sure. Thanks. Thanks. Karen, was there a specific change you wanted me to help make on organization number? I know we just kind of discussed it and I'm trying to figure out. Um, not necessarily, more so just, I guess, like it over because I'm not like, I, I don't fully know what that like membership level is. Yeah, yeah. And it looks like Josh added elections too. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess I think in, because we all most, for the most part work in GitHub, I think all the CNCF does GitHub. It, it's easy to conflate the GitHub organization member with this. Maybe if we called it project member, it would not be like, there wouldn't be like 
we wouldn't have to like have a caveat and we're like, this doesn't actually mean GitHub organization member. I actually don't know the difference, so I will defer to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, like for example, in the GitHub, there's like a Deus Labs org or Kubernetes org or Helm has an org too. And um, it's called in GitHub organization member. Okay. Right. But the way this is worded right now in the document, where they're talking about like elections and things like that, those two aren't actually tied together at all. It has more to do with, are you a member of this CNCF project? So I think if we changed it to project member, people wouldn't be confused and think we're talking about GitHub privileges, like being a member of the GitHub org. Um, so what do you think is like the most generic version of this? Because I think for Kubernetes specifically, I think you have to actually be an org member to like vote for stuff, right? I'm saying it's that's like a technical mechanism for doing voting. Yeah. But this role right here that we're describing okay. has nothing to do with GitHub. It has okay. to do with just categorizing your relationship to the project. And so we're saying, like, when we say the word organization, what does that refer to when you're talking about a CNCF project? The only thing that comes to mind for me is GitHub organization, which is like a very specific detail that some projects may or may not do. So that's kinda... like, I thought Josh was going for that, to be honest. Was he? Because like, well, so what, what would be the difference between a contributor and like your version of organization member? It's not contributor, I was saying project member, as in you're a member of the Kubernetes project or the Helm project or Linkerd. Um, I don't think we want to conflate, like make like a one-to-one -one thing between GitHub organization membership, which may not be a thing for all projects and it, yeah. they could implement membership differently. Um, okay. That's all I was suggesting. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think if you see enough of if or maybe the problem is that there's stuff about elections, which is governance in here at all. That's a good point. <laughs> maybe that's the thing that is bothering me. I think they're both bothering me one because it really it's using a term that maybe isn't the right term for the role, but two yeah. that it, we're talking about governance outside of the governance stack. Well, so, okay, if you didn't see that term, just based on the description that's there, what would you put there? If I just see the word organization member, the only thing I'm aware of that like I, I could map to is GitHub organization membership, which seems really specific to be on the ladder. Oh, or sorry, wait, let me ask my question. Okay, so okay. Um, what do you think of when I say someone who is an established contributor who regularly participates in their project and has the privilege um, who has privileges in both project repositories and elections? I don't know because elections is very specific to everyone's yeah. governance stock. If we just took off the elections part, um, I would, I don't even know. I think I, I'd call them a contributor. I don't know. Yeah, that's why. Right? Like, Maybe that's just like, member. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, trying to like see this from Josh's angle, which would I'm guessing be like the Kubernetes org membership um, as his example. Yeah, it's just that not everyone does what Kubernetes does. Right. Um, so like, it, it's just a way to put people in a list basically. And so like, what's the, like the most generic abstraction from the Kubernetes like org member? Um, yeah like conversation we can take because I, I almost think like kubernetes is hyper specialized like yeah. they come up with a lot of roles some of their roles may not be on our ladder and that's okay right so then because they're like the unicorn right <laughs> you know everyone else is much smaller um and usually isn't as organized <laughs> um yeah, because now that I'm thinking back about it, right? It's like, if you look at the requirements, it says like the, like 
number of PRs and all that. Like, I think this was put in there to describe someone who is an org member, like on GitHub. Yeah. So maybe I'll just put suggestions on it and point Josh to it yeah. and be like, I think this is maybe a bit more of project member and let's take the election stuff out of it because we should be covering that in the government stock, not duplicating it here. Yeah. If it's not in the governance stock, we should move it there. Um. Because that's why there's so many metrics is because right. it's used for elections. But I'll, like, you know, a couple of the projects I've been on, like anyone can be a member if they stick around. Right. You know? And it has nothing to do with being able to elect people. So they're not nearly as picky about <laughs> making someone a member. Okay, so, okay, so we're gonna consider possibly taking it out, right? Maybe, or, yeah, or okay. just, um, it's just, yeah, it's just conflating too much stuff in here. Um, so then going back to what you were saying, where like, you know, you were wondering if this was like organization member versus project member. Um, if we were to build out a section that was project member, what would that look like? I don't know if it needs to be a role. Right. No. Okay. And maybe that's the thing. Maybe this organization member just needs to move into governance. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can make a comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, I need to fix my clock. It now thinks it's 6.30. Okay, I just added a comment there. We'll chat about that in Slack later. I don't, I don't think the content there is, is wrong at all. It's just, I think maybe it belongs in the other doc. Okay, yeah. And I added something to approver just to say like it may just be over a sub area, not an entire, you know, thing. Um. For the maintainer section on the main mm -hmm. contributor ladder, how much of it should I abstract in relation to the expansion pack? Um, like what is the generic maintainer description then? <laughs> Just a maintainer is a contributor with commit access. I mean, they are, yeah, really. Do they all have access? What? Do all, like, do all different kinds of maintainers have commit access? I think it's a, it's a, because you have commit access and it's hard for me to speak about it because I don't do the Kubernetes model and a lot of people don't either. Um, because they have that approver thing, which is different. But because you get to decide what code ultimately gets into a release and, go and goes, you're making decisions about the project, either from a technical perspective, a roadmap perspective, um, and, and priorities, right? Because you ultimately get to decide if this contribution is accepted or not. And if we're and by doing that, you're, you're deciding the entire direction of the project. So it's commit access, right? But really it's a decision-making uh, role at the technical level. Okay. Um, and if you need me to like somehow write that instead of trying to translate what I just said, I, I can take a stab at it. <laughs> sure. I mean, you're probably, 
I'm sure you're a better writer anyway. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I'm just, sometimes it's not nice to babble at someone for five minutes and then expect them to turn it into two sentences. Do you want me to comment so you um, remember to go back to it? Yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> oh, hack MD. The comment, like, clean up this section. That's not for me. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, so yeah. I'll update the description and just explain it's a technical decision yeah. making role. Um, that's usually, or not usually, it's because they can decide if things go in the project or not. Okay. You know, are we going to do this issue? Are we going to merge this PR? Approvers, I think, also get to kind of say if stuff should merge. But um, I think usually they're not making decisions about if doing that issue in general is the right thing to do. Um, and like an approver and a reviewer are maybe kind of the same thing, right? It's yeah, it's this is a very and that's why I was kind of like picking on it a bit is it's very specific to Kubernetes. Right. Um, so in Kubernetes, no one has commit access, to be clear. Everything goes through Prow, um, mm -hmm. which is like this GitHub automation that they have. Yeah. And um, you leave a comment if you're a reviewer and you say slash LGTM. Mm -hmm. And if you're a prover, then you can, you can do slash LGTM, but you can also do slash approve. So like an approver can just you know, merge the thing all by themselves pretty much. Yeah. Um, and then if you're a reviewer, you're able to do the work of the code review and then maybe make it a little easier for the approver to just go, yes, this looks good in general and trust that the review was done well. Okay. Like every project has different rules about that, but um, approver has more responsibility because their comment is what merges the code. A lot of projects just have maintainers though. Yeah. And they do all of this. Wait, okay. So if you only have like, if you had one person look at something before our maintainer, are they more likely to be a reviewer or an approver? A reviewer. Okay. So then, because like it's mostly helpful in projects where they require multiple reviews. Mm -hmm. Like we need two reviews to merge. Yeah. So there's people who who don't have as much uh, trust. So like they can help review and they they can be like, oh, this style is wrong or whatever. Like help fix the code and get it up to speed. But that second person could be a maintainer, could be the approver, has to make a decision on like is the whole thing actually implemented the way we wanted it to be? <laughs> is it ready? Are there gaps? You know, is this safe to bring in? So then are all reviewers, sorry, no, all approvers are reviewers, but yes. not all reviewers are approvers. Yes. Okay, maybe, okay. Should include that one way or another. Um, are you writing that? I can write it down. Yeah, I'm gonna change the section to reviewer then. Okay. Um, Oh, where'd that go? What happened no, to approver? <laughs> I changed it. Wait, what? Did they used to be two sections? Under? I thought there was a section called reviewer and a section called approver. Oh, yeah, there used to be. Yeah. So I think Josh, so I mean, it's it's safe. like like I think that version is what I have in the drafts folder, so we still have it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but I think maybe we went. I think we took out. Uh, yeah, I guess we took out reviewer, or we at least changed the name. But oh, now okay. I think. Let me, me reread this then. Approves pull requests before they're merged by maintainers. Oh. Yeah, you're right. That should be reviewer. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Sorry, in my head, I just kind of thought that it said something different because <laughs> I was thinking of the draft. Okay, so 
a reviewer approves um, okay that looks good that makes Wait, sense where should i add like um or do we want to explicitly state this right in now? kubernetes yeah. i think maintainer may be approver Wait, so should we throw out the word approver at all? <laughs> should we address it? I think approver is very specific to Kubernetes and we just don't need to say it. They will have their own special section. Okay. It, um, yeah. In general, I don't want to worry too much about making the template yeah. handle everything that a specialized project may be doing. Right. Okay, so I, I understand the change now. You're right, we would change it to reviewer. So oh. I'm gonna change experience as an approver to an experience as a reviewer for some of these. I think we say approver elsewhere in the stock basically. Oh gosh, okay, I'm gonna control F. <laughs> I mean, is the talk right? Huh? There's the table of contents. Yeah. Viewer. And then uh, I think it was under. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how to search in this very well. I think I got them all. I think you did. I just did control us. <laughs> like, okay, great, great. Um, I'm going to update the expansion back just to remove that word too. Oh yeah. Cause we have duplicate. Oh, we took it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We took it out. Um, cool. Um, really good. It's, this is so hard cause it, it ever changing documents to work on. <laughs> huh? He so said, this is a tough document to work on cause everyone does it differently. Yeah. No. Um, okay, yeah, wait, so I guess I, I want to be able to clean up the maintainer section in a way where it will seamlessly flow into the expansion pack if someone needs it. Um, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so we would get rid of all the stuff right now that says community maintainer right project manager okay so just delete that whole section i think so yeah i think so okay here we go <laughs> okay and then maybe as a sub section under maintainer we send people to the expansion pack to discuss um different the different roles to find there like there's lots of different ways to be a maintainer on a project um, yeah, not, it's not always a, a code role. Well, so are, so would those, would the expansion path be the non-code roles or will the code maintainer role, like, are we just discussing a code maintainer role here then, or will the co code maintainer role be a category of the expansion path? I think we want to be careful about how we frame it because yeah. I don't want it to be like, well, the default best first class, right. whatever one is the code one. I just more meant that the description right now for maintainer includes mm -hmm. a lot of um, technical like code contributions because yeah. the contributor reviewer, um, if you're trying to become a compute, uh, community manager, for example, you're not going to do those. Right. And there should still be a way to do it. Um, I have an idea, a suggestion. Yeah. What if we take, I'm just going to type on this real quick, yeah. but imagine it's going to go in the other document or whatever. I don't want to use the word technical. So I'm going to use the word code if that's okay. Yeah. And then we would have this stuff and this would move to the expansion pack. Right. 
And then up here, we would do general criteria that was that attitude stuff. Yeah. Attitude, responsibility. Yeah. And then because we did that, um, maintainer doesn't mean just code maintainer. Yeah. It just means someone with decision-making capabilities on the project. And then there are different types of maintainers. And code maintainer is one of them. Well, to these other ones. So then, okay, so like originally, I thought when we were splitting it that we were just kind of splitting. Like, I originally had this one as like the light version, and then the other one was like the extent, you know, the expanded version, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then when we were on our call last Thursday, jo Josh mentioned like the other, the, the newer or the additional ladder being more like a breakout of the maintainer section. And so now yeah. I'm wondering like the way you're phrasing the code maintainer role, um, you know, if we're trying to not necessarily um, give any weight to any one kind of maintainer than another, mm -hmm. should we throw the ones that are in the, in the expansion pack back in? Oh no. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't think so. And I'm, I'm, I want to make sure that my suggestion makes sense. Okay. I think it's trying to address what you're talking about here. Where it says maintainer, mm -hmm. right? Um, we're going to change it so that it, none of the criteria or tasks are about code, committing yeah. code, reviewing code, all that stuff that we think of. Yeah. And then code maintainer goes into the expansion pack and the expansion pack is maybe we stop calling it expansion pack. Maybe we just call it types of maintainers. Yeah. And then let me see. So is that kind of, we don't need to move things back into this document because they all, the, the, the maintainer description in the general doc will be vague enough, not vague, but you know what yeah. I mean? None of it will be specific to code. Well, so I get what you're saying. I guess I'm asking, do we need to break this out into a separate document? I guess maybe like, as in like, you know, do we do that other like, ex well, um, the maintainer doc. Um, I think it's, I guess, big, I think it's big enough. Okay. And, and the idea is that maintainer is the, the top ladder. The ladder. Right. Yeah. So you've made it to the top of the ladder. And it's just a question of like, are you on the left side of the ladder or the middle side? The right yeah. Side, maybe. Okay. You know, like who are you standing next to on the ladder? And they're all different people. Okay. Um, so I think it, I can see making it a separate document just so it's not so giant. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so what did you say the other one could be like, just like a, like a maintainer? I guess it's a template now, or it would be, yeah. So just like, it's just, it's just like a category, you know? You're like, I am a maintainer. I have decision-making capabilities on the project. Yeah. Right? Um, but what area of the project depends on the type of maintainer I am. So would it just be a maintainer template then? I'm just wondering if you want to use the template word again. Oh. Oh, I see your question. Like what we call it. Yeah. It's still a template. Yeah. Um, I would just maybe call it, if, if I, I got to just pick and I wrote down whatever I felt like, I'd yeah. probably call it contributor ladder maintainer types template. And I know it's wordy, but yeah, yeah, like that. And then it, it'd be clear it's kind of like a sub document just so it's not ginormous. And yeah. it's easy to see that they're all equal at that point. Okay. Um, wait, I'm going to change the talk right now because they're not all equal. <laughs> okay, wait, I'm fixing it. Like that. And maybe code is not the right word, but I just hope, I really don't want to use the word technical. So that's the best word I have. And then I have one question for you. Mm -hmm. You notice how some of them are called maintainers and some of them are called managers? Yeah. 
I, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> well, it would be great if they could be consistent. But I don't know if that's just like me wanting to make stuff look tidy, but more just I want to make sure they are all perceived as maintainer roles. Well, I mean, there's three categories, right? There's maintainer, there's manager, and then there's the lead. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Um, I'm not as familiar with some project lead, to be honest. I don't I think... quite know. Like, do we have an example of a, of a project that has that? Yeah, I think just like the Kubernetes SIGs. Oh, yeah. So, like, if you're the lead for SIG networking, yeah. But isn't that a governance role? You have to be elected. No, you don't. Do you? To be a lead for one of the SIGs? Um, or are we not talking about SIGs? Are we talking about something else? I think it's SIGs, but I don't think you have to be elected per se. Um, I'm thinking of like one specific. Can you say it? We're recorded, so I don't know. Huh? Yeah. Can you say which one it is? I, well, I can't remember specifically and also like I can't say, um, but more so that like, they're like, um, just that like the role that someone took up um, wasn't necessarily dictated by like a voting system. Cause sometimes like if you have like, um, like I think some of the newer SIGs like, cause you start as like a working group, right? And then sometimes you become a SIG. So I think like mm -hmm. sometimes you like naturally just- You're the legacy. Yeah. 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 Or Hmm. I still feel like that's a government governance. Not all governance models use elections. I'm going to leave a comment on that and we'll, we'll talk to Josh about it. How's that sound? Okay. Yeah. I want to be like, isn't this a governance role? Wait, so what about when, um, like you're in like a, you're an owner for a, like a, I don't know the terminology for this, like for like a sub repo, does that, does that make sense? Like, you know, like- Yeah, yeah, so like Kubernetes has lots of repos, right? Mm -hmm. And there's the Kubernetes, Kubernetes repo. Mm -hmm. And then there's other ones inside of that. And you're yeah. saying, what if you're a, a maintainer for that? Yeah. Is that what the we're saying with lead though? As opposed to like me like sub project maintainer. Oh wait. Yeah. You could have I mean, more maintainers. I wouldn't even call that a separate thing. What would you call when that? We, when we did reviewer, mm -hmm. we said this was a change we just made in this meeting. I said a reviewer may only have responsibility over a sub area of the project. You, you may be a maintainer just for a single repository. Yeah. In a, Cause like Porter does that. We have um, like lots of repos and some people are just a maintainer for one of those repos, but they're a maintainer. They're not called they're not less than other people. It's just the scope of their decision-making capabilities is restricted to that repository. Wait, but okay. So does that mean that you're interpreting sub-project lead to be above them? I'm saying that sub-project lead, I'm not sure it should be a thing. I think it just means a maintainer with a different scope. Like maintainer doesn't have to be, I don't know, we want... Cause like there's a project maintainer and they're like a maintainer for the whole project. And then there may be a repo maintainer and they're just responsible for a smaller scope of the project. Okay. But they're not necessarily a different type of maintainer. Exactly. Okay. Like I could be the docs maintainer for just one repo. I could be the release manager for just one repo versus a larger one. It really depends on how projects do their own thing. Okay. 
but I, I don't think it's a separate thing that's this like when we're talking about types of maintainers yeah it doesn't fit okay right because you're saying that's just more around governance like yeah i want to okay. say that maintainers can have different scopes of responsibility their scope of responsibility may be the entire project like all of kubernetes i don't care where it's happening yeah. some people may have responsibility just for one or two repos okay so maybe it's more of like thinking it from the thinking about it, not from the, not so much the angle of like, um, how much they're overseeing, but more so like, kind of like the discipline, that's probably not the best word, but just kind of like the kind of stuff that they would do, right? Like, um, cause it's like the nature of like being a community manager, like the nature of the work that you do will be very different from a docs manager. And that's why we're like, we're splitting. Yeah. Each yeah. Other. yeah. Discipline's a good way to put it, I think. Okay. You want to change it to discipline? Maintain um, disciplines? Or just, I don't know, type works too. But I, I, I like thinking about it that way because it makes it clear that sub-project lead and project lead don't go in this doc. <laughs> yeah, this is a template contributor. <laughs> God, there's so many works. Okay. Um, this is a template contributor ladder. Nope. Uh, template. Um, types. Oh wait, okay, hold on. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna move it down. Wrong with that. <laughs> uh, I'm moving it down since I guess the top part was, oh wait, hold on. I think we wanna explain maintainer and then do the table of contents. Wait, no. Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, um, oh, okay. Cool. Let me see. Okay. Right. Okay. I think that's what we're going for. Okay. Um, so I have a question for you. Sure. The main, uh, like the head, heading one maintainer, is that just repeating what is on the contributor ladder basic? I think it should. Okay. Do you want to repeat it? Because I think people will, will mess up editing both. Maybe we should just have a short one line that says what it is and just link to the section in the other one. So we don't literally copy and paste maintainer between the two documents. Well, we would only have to copy it. Well, I guess we'd have to copy and paste it if and whenever we update it. Because because it's not just us, right? Anyone who's using this template will also be trying to keep these in sync. Because mm. they may have, if, if they do, two. If they follow our template the way it is, they'll end up with two documents as well. Yeah. Okay. So that's why um, I, was, I was thinking the link may work better for people. Okay. Where do you? Where are you suggesting you put it? Let me. I'm gonna edit this, and you can yell at me if you don't like it. And we'll okay. Let me update the maintainer description real quick. Maintainer is a contributor. Okay. This is what I'm gonna suggest. Oh wait, I'm gonna, that's why I was gonna, I was gonna delete maintainer. And then up here, I was gonna link all, do you see the second paragraph now? 
Yeah. I don't know how to say this right. Our on the same. Our. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? I'm trying to make it a link, but um, and then we'll go back to do link to main container in ladder. Yeah. Does that make sense? And then, so I got rid of what I want to get rid of. I'm going to delete it real quick and then don't cry. <laughs> I want to do this. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. But I don't want to lose the changes you've made, but I'm just saying like that should, any changes we've made to that should just go in the other document and we can get rid of this section. Okay. Um, what do you think? You don't have to like it. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. Do we want to include that word discipline in the part you just added? Yeah, totally. Let often have... Uh, <laughs> Larger, more complex projects often have um, maintainers of various disciplines. I don't know. Um, often separate responsibilities by discipline. Oh my God, I don't know how to spell that word. Discipline? Yes, you got it. Okay. I <laughs> often separate maintainer responsibilities by discipline. There you go. All of these maintainer disciplines. Yeah. I have no idea if that's spelled right. Are variations of the maintainer role from the contributor. Oops. Big. I love whoever's watching this video in the future, by the way, <laughs> if they've stuck through it to the end. <laughs> okay. Like if you're still watching, come to our meetings. <laughs> what do you think? Um, oh my gosh, it's gonna go seven times, sorry. Um, I know it's really late, so if we just need to like stop in the middle of what we're doing and give up, that's cool. Um, yeah, I think it looks good. We should copy the code maintainer section over. Um, does the, do you think the table of contents should go before the second paragraph or where it is now? Oh, I like where it is. Okay, cool. Because then we can um, really explain why those bullets are happening. <laughs> yeah. I don't speak English anymore. It's 5.30 my time. <laughs> um, the last sentence of the second paragraph. Yep. What does that mean? One or more of these is appropriate. I think that people are trying to give guidance on somehow consolidating these two documents and making a single document out of it. But what's a contributor's file? Like that's just where you list the names, right? I think it meant to say contributor ladder file. Oh, okay. All right. Do we still want to do that? Do we want to encourage people to not edit this template, but just copy and paste and put it in the other files so that in the end they have one single contributor ladder? I guess I was confused about what the intent was when the file got split. If in the if people who are following the template end up with two files or one. I think they should end up with one. I think it was more of like splitting it so that when they're reading it, like they might not need this. Um, but okay. if they do, they would just have extra. Yeah. Let's do this. Um, I want to like make it red. More uh, Here, I'm going to be really clear. Copy and edit any maintainer disciplines that apply to your project into the contributor ladder. How does that sound? Is that a little more clear? Yeah, which should be contributor ladder file. Or sorry. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> okay. I just want to make people clear, like yeah any of these are you 
put them in that file. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, oh, I didn't edit the other thing. In case. Here. I think we don't need to say that twice. I don't even remember what it says, so I think we're fine. <laughs> Under the maintainer section. I think we can just make this one sentence. That's all I was trying to do, because we were kind of saying the five, same thing a couple different ways. How does that look? Yeah. That, would you know what to do if you ran into this? Um, we're reading this template. Um, Now that I'm reading it, they should put like, they should by default at least put in code maintainer, right? It's not like, oh, if you need, like, it's not like these are additional, these are things you should do. Does that yeah, make I'm fine with saying that in order to make it clear that they're all the same, yeah. you kind of still want code maintainer in here and you're always gonna copy at least code maintainer. Yeah, okay, so then it seems like more of like our direction from the main one will be like, um, well, so that's the thing, right? It's like, if someone were to use the templates, they are gonna have to use both, right? You mean they're going to have to have two files by the time they're done? No, not that they'll create two files, but they're gonna have to at least reference both of these docs that we just made. Correct, yes. Okay. And I think that's good because again, it's, putting weight behind what we've said, which is all of these disciplines are equal. Um, if you just include code by default, I, th I think you're implicitly saying which one's the most important. And I mean, I think because like, they're gonna have to view both docs anyway, I kind of still keep re revisiting the idea of making one doc instead of two. Sure, how about we keep the two docs for now. Yeah. And then when we submit the draft, once we've decided, yeah. we'll just put this in the right place in the document. Okay. Yeah. Sound? I mean, you can change my mind on this. Um, Cause I know I like we... one file just fine. Um, I'm, I'm not going to throw a monkey in the works about this. Like whatever people want to do. Okay. Um, I can see what you're saying that it's easier just to delete stuff that you don't need than copy and paste over. Yeah especially if they're already going to have to reference the second doc or the, yeah. the second template, no matter what. Or yeah. they um, if we want, we could just do that right now, or we can just kind of keep in our heads, maybe put a thing like note. We this uh, instructions under maintain. Is that yeah just so we remember what we're talking about well we don't have to stay here for 20 more minutes while we do yeah. it yeah <laughs> sounds good okay are we feeling better about this yeah a lot better <laughs> okay i feel like this is really moving in the right direction um it, it's so much of what we've been doing is categorization yes and that's hard so it's fine yeah other templates didn't have to do this task of categorization so yeah. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I'm glad you're able to look over it because I feel like Josh and I were just kind of running in circles for a little bit. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I think uh, I think we're getting a lot closer. I'm sorry, it's just so iterative, but like I think that's just the name of the game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, cool. I'll clean it up a bit, but otherwise, I think it's just a matter of like building out the different maintainer categories a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, okay, for sure. Cool. All right. All right. Love it. Thanks so much. Yeah. Good night. Bye.